Brayton, day one. The luster of the heavens waned till sun was bare, and the nightly frolics deadened frozen sultry air with their deposed lunar emperor, sleeping soundly, flawlessly temporal, sunken in the ground. Vagrant chalice bearers were now knocking on ebony doors, selling creepy berries to get ready for the coming of bubonic wars and pestilence of blight, and every other nature's plaintive cry that with surplus slight caused many a creature to die. Fishermen with shaven noses, surrounded with filial piety and skeleton roses that marked the borders of their society, were sipping icy ales in the misty dripping caves, gathering dirt behind the nails, digging graves, knitting yarns of valiant fathers who, like them, were minstrels to the cause of others. And everywhere was bloody childbirth, rogues, knaves, boars whose feet kicked the earth, in search of forgotten cures. Charlatans, fakes, masters of phony pretense, heroic mistakes, skeptics of rational sense. Spiteful kings, knights with dreams, and jesters with wings, whose pageantry and means strangled a noble few who'd fawn upon the royalty in the name of their brew under the name of loyalty. Thus the monarch was barren, and his people were bare, with no comfort to hide them, but the westerly waves of air that kept them so warm during the long days of summer when vermin was born in the fields of Roebuck and Grunham. and the heat of the sun ignited the carcass heap of dead sheep till there was only one left for to share and eat. But the eyes of the land this morn were ne'er shut, for yestreen the lunar sands were seen to be torn like the wings of a bat, and the people were wary, so the children were fed on the chalice berries berries to protect them from the Armageddon. And huts were built from salmon tails, padded with quilt and worn out sails, decked in objects of deity, which they usually kept strapped to their rickety limbs. There they slept with one eye shut and the other wide awake till noon, when every single hut began to slowly shake. Men cried with silence, and women stabbed their breasts, fearing cruel violence that high winds from the west always bring. And it was then that some heard the beating of the wing and the screech of the bird that they came to dread from this day onward. For every time its ugly head appeared from the woods, the land was ravaged and the roots were torn from earth's crust and savage rains of Abaddon swept through treeless moors like blinded wrath of gods. First time it came to soar above where roe deer trod then with a human yell it dropped onto the carcass heap and the air began to smell and the sky began to weep for an hour or more the tempest was rife trees were thrown in war with last bastions of life clouds stretched beyond horizon stabbed fiercely with a light where the eagle of demise on carcass meat dined with such delight. 
Fires burned the villages and drowned the ashes, then buried the villages whose bloodless gashes oozed pain. And the anger that threatened to plough the stockade were remnants of grain from winter's futile trade rotted. At long last, when dust finally settled on the fetid pus of the stinging Apollyon nettle, a faint but sordid howl echoed through the arid sands, and the wide-eyed screeching fowl of the Neverland flew with a mocking air towards its hispid nest on a mountain bare in a gargoyle sinuous west. The silence that followed was long and cold, timeless and hollow like the churchyard vault, solid and dead like the tombstone of the maker which once bled prior to breaking under the strain of callous guile of watchmen and sextons when they entertained with parasite smiles that were forgotten on Sundays. Oh, how mighty the awe, the glory and the grace of nature's law, the zenith and the nadir, the root and the style of God's treason that here was now festering in bile. The dead cardinal's limbs, the smoky hair of mortis rigor, the priestess's forbidden dreams of marrying her gravedigger, the organist's malice, the king's pet weeds, a chalice bearer's chalice, all have now borne their seeds. And the priest who crept up with his howling iron tongue had vainly swallowed up his blood-filled, ailed lung. For the night errantry that he showed was foolish now, not bold. And as his body lay in sour filth at putrid rest, a fathomless chasm in naked savagery dressed with ashen miasma seething at its vent, sucked it in with ogreish breath, rendering the corpulent father wheezing whiffs of death. A bestial deluge of fire then swept through the cordial lake to burst onto the quagmire where the sleeping slakes bedded the young, and with one flash of light stabbed the living lung, spawning nightmares at the dawn of night. And still as mighty dark could be, when crippled by celestial rakes, in its fields and holts of misery, beacon eyes were all that stayed awake.